the Eagles hoping for their fourth. On third and five, Fryer, he's open, Rod Streeter. Rod Streeter streaking down the sideline. He's still going. It's in the 10 of Philadelphia. Rod Streeter would first go to a junior college and play for Alfred State College in New York. He would attend this college in 2008 and 2009, his freshman and sophomore year. During the 2009 season, his sophomore year, Rod would have 24 catches for 589 yards and six touchdowns. Not only that, he would somewhat play on the defensive side as well, playing safety. During that time, he would only have 20 tackles and two interceptions. Now, after his two years at Alfred State, Rod Streeter would then transfer to Temple University. Now, his first year at Temple University in 2010, Rod Streeter would play in 12 games that season and would have 30 catches for 481 yards and score four touchdowns. Not only that, he would run the ball seven times for 83 yards and would score a rushing touchdown in that 2010 year being his junior season. In his senior year, he would look for a breakout year, but he would play in a run-based offense. What does that mean? I will tell you right now. In this 2011 season, in his senior year, where they would run this run-based offense, where the Temple Owls would have 627 rushing attempts for 3,364 yards that season. Now, if you look at the passing, like I told you, they had 627 rushing attempts that whole season. Now, for the passing, they would only pass it 166 times for 1,648 passing yards. But despite that, Rod Streeter would have 19 catches for 401 yards and only scored three touchdowns. Not mainly his fault because, like I said, he played in a run-based offense where they ran a lot more than they would even pass. During that year in 2011, the Temple Owls would participate in the New Mexico Bowl against Wyoming University. Rod Streeter would only have one catch for 61 yards and score a touchdown, which would help Temple win their first bowl game since 1979. Now, after Rod Streeter's college career, he was looking to make it into the pros. Unfortunately, he would not be invited to the scouting combine due to his stats, but he would do a pro day. Now, after his pro day to show off his talents to these NFL scouts and all, he would be in contact with these teams. These teams were the most interested in Rod Streeter, the Baltimore Ravens, the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the San Francisco 49ers. Now, after his pro day, Rod Streeter was hoping that he would get drafted into the later rounds. Now, un unfortunately, now, unfortunately, despite all this stuff happening to him, he would go undrafted. But despite going undrafted, Rod Streeter would get offers from the Green Bay Packers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which was a team that was kind of looking at him, and the Oakland Raiders. Rod Streeter decided to sign with the Oakland Raiders at a better chance of getting into the NFL. Now, the Raiders were already off the bat very impressed with three major things from Rod Streeter. One was his run blocking ability. As we all know, wide receivers coming into the NFL somewhat struggle with run blocking because they don't do a lot of it in college. But since Rod Streeter was in a run-based offense his senior year where the wide receivers are required to block, so he had no problems doing that and they were very impressed by that. Not only that, they were so impressed with his run blocking ability that during practice, they would put Rod Streeter in with the number ones, with the starting offense, strictly just to run block. So obviously that's a great sign. If you're an undrafted rookie and you're going in with the first team to do reps. Now, granted, it's only run blocking, but still that's a lot better than just not being in at all. So they were very impressed by that. Not only that, 
They were impressed by his clean route running. For an undrafted rookie, they said that he ran very clean routes and he was also very good at beating press coverage. Now, doing all that, 2012 would be his rookie season. In the preseason, Rod Streeter would work and grind to get a spot on the roster. As you know, undrafted rookies have a slim chance of getting onto that roster, especially where they are on the depth chart. During this time, he would have 18 catches for 165 yards, which would help him earn a spot on the roster. Now, we fast forward. In the start of the 2000 regular season, Rod Streeter would end up getting the starting job due to a lot of injuries in the wide receiver lineup. He would get his first ever career start against a Monday night game against the San Diego Chargers in Oakland. Now, Rod Streeter's first ever, first time ever catching a ball in the game would be for a catch and fumble, un unfortunately. But he is a rookie, so hey, it is what it is. But after this incident, Rod Streeter would finish the game with four catches for 27 yards and score a touchdown in his first ever NFL game. Later on in that season, Rod Streeter would have his first 100-yard game in week 14 against the Denver Broncos, where he would have four catches for exactly 100 yards. Now, after all this, he wasn't starting, so he's in and out of the lineup a lot. He finished his rookie year with 39 catches for 584 yards and scoring three touchdowns. So now, fast forwarding to the 2013 season, Rod Streeter would do so well that he would actually become the starter in year number two. From last year, being an undrafted rookie wide receiver and now trying to make the roster and now here it is fast forward to the next year and he is already a starter for the Oakland Raiders not only that his second year would be his best season as a pro athlete he would have a handful of big games that season one of those games being in week nine against the Philadelphia Eagles Rod Streeter would have five catches for 98 yards including this 66 yard run and catch Another big game he would have would be in the following week against the Tennessee Titans, where he would have five catches for 93 yards. But his best game that year would be in week 14 against the New York Giants, where Rod Streeter would have seven catches for 130 yards and would score a touchdown. Now, Rod Streeter would greatly improve from the last season finishing the 2013 season with 60 catches for 88 yards and four touchdowns. Not only that, he would play with three different quarterbacks in that one year, being with Terrell Pryor, Matt Flynn, and Matt McGloin. Not only that, he would have the best receiving stats on the team that year. And not only that, things started looking up for Rod Streeter. He had came in the league as a undrafted rookie, made the team his rookie year, started the very next year, had the best receiving stats on the team, and he would keep progressing with his catching, receiving yards, and touchdowns. And he was only 112 yards away from being a 100 yard receiver for the Oakland Raiders, which at the time would have been the first time since Randy Moss in 2005, but couldn't quite catch it there. Even in the 2014 offseason, where Rod would make two parody videos of the Beats by Dre when those videos came out, which are these videos right here. We're going around selling delicious cookies to help the animals in the local shelter find new home. Would you like to buy some cookies? It's for the puppies. The cause is called Cause for Paws, P A W S. I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. Well, you can 
because I don't go in any cooler than that. Also, I really, really would prefer it if it's saline because my skin is just really sensitive and I don't need to worry. <laughs> Rod Streeter would quickly become a fan favorite in Oakland and was looking like he would be the future star with us in Oakland. Many people, including myself, thought in 2014, Rod Streeter would have his breakout year. The Oakland Raiders would go after wide receiver, veteran wide receiver at that, James Jones from the Green Bay Packers and free agency to help out the young wide receiver court. Also, things will look up for Rod because the Raiders would not draft a wide receiver in the 2014 NFL Draft. So all signs would point for Rod Streeter to take that next great step and become that next great star for us and one of those diamond in the rough players that just came from nowhere and things were looking up for Rod Streeter. In the start of the 2014 NFL season, the Raiders would play against the New York Jets. In this game, Rod Streeter would have five catches for 46 yards and score a touchdown. Also, if you didn't know, Derek Carr's first NFL touchdown came with, guess who? Rod Streeter. The very next week, week two against the Texans, Rod Streeter would not have a great game where he would only have one catch for six yards, which would be, you know, not a great game for him. But then the very next week, the Raiders would go against the New England Patriots and play them in Foxborough. Rod Streeter would have three catches for 32 yards, but would leave the game due to a leg injury. Sadly, this would be the last time he would play that season as he would be placed on IR as he had to get foot surgery and would be out for the entire year. He would finish that season with nine catches for 84 yards and only a touchdown. So it's kind of sad because it's like this was supposed to be Rod Streeter's year. Everybody knew it was supposed to, he was supposed to be the next great wide receiver for us and 2014 was going to show us, but only after three games, his season would be over. Not only that, to add more bad news to this, just weeks after his injury, Rod Streeter would sadly lose his mother to her battle of breast cancer. And then unfortunately in 2015, it would not get any easier for Rod Streeter. In the 2015 offseason, the Raiders would hire a new coach, Jack Del Rio. And the Raiders would go after another veteran wide receiver to help out with the wide receiver core. And they would go after Michael Crabtree from the 49ers. And not only that, another blow to Rod Streeter would be in the 2015 NFL Draft. In the first round, the Oakland Raiders would draft Alabama wide receiver Amari Cooper which meant there would be a lot more competition at the wide receiver position. But at least Rod Streeter would be at least able to compete for the slot wide receiver position, being that Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper were gonna be the number one and number two. And they would cut James Jones that season. So it is, it, it, is, it does suck because it was like he was supposed to be the next number one for us. And now after that injury, it kind of set him back, but at least he would have that that chance to compete for the starting spot. I mean, not the starting spot, but the slot wide receiver spot. But it would go to another undrafted wide receiver, and this time it would go to Seth Roberts from West Alabama. So now he is now on the fifth string, which it would be Michael Crabtree, Amari Cooper, Seth Roberts, 
Andre Holmes, and then at the fifth spot would be Rod Streeter. In the first game of the 2015 season against the Cincinnati Bengals, Rod Streeter would only have one catch for eight yards. And unfortunately, that would be his only catch the whole entire 2015 season. Because for the rest of the season, Rod Streeter would be a healthy scratch. Now, if you guys don't know what a healthy scratch is, it's basically when the player is not injured at all, but they elect not for him to dress up. So basically, he's not going to play, so they don't even have him dressed up for the game. And he was a healthy scratch in week two, the following week, and just... For the whole entire season, they decided just to go with those four wide receivers and not Rod Streeter. He would not play at all in the 2015 season. And unfortunately, at the end of the 2015 season, the Raiders would part ways from Rod Streeter. It's kind of messed up, man, because this was a guy who was undrafted, then became the starter, then in his second year had the best season of his career, was 112 yards away from having a thousand yard receiving season then in 2014 the season that was supposed to be his breakout year he gets hurt and they brought in more talent and now he's kind of the odd man out so it's it it a sad sad situation for what what happened to rod streeter now during the 2016 offseason and free agency Rod Streeter would sign a one-year contract with the Kansas City Chiefs if you remember they were at his pro day looking at him when he was at Temple. So he would be signed to the Kansas City Chiefs, but before the season even started, he was traded to the 49ers for undisclosed draft pick. Now, Rod Streeter would play in all 16 games and would start in the last two games of the season as well. But being with the 49ers, his best game of that year would be in week 16 against the LA Rams where he would have six catches for 63 yards and a touchdown. Not only that, but he will be responsible for this game winning touchdown right here. Throw, catch made. Rod Streeter has a 49er touchdown. They are going for two. Their kicker is not on the field. That's a nice little slant route by Rod Streeter playing only because Torrey Smith is on IR. It's a nice catch after him. After all that, Rod Streeter would finish the 2016 season with 18 catches for 191 yards and two touchdowns. But after that season, he was cut again by the 49ers. So now he's looking for another job. So now in 2017 in the off season, he would sign to the Buffalo Bills but they would cut him before the season even started in early September. And he would not have any catches, no touchdowns. He would not play at all in 2017. But there is hope for Rod Streeter because on January 1st, the Bills gave him a future slash reserved contract for 2018. And now he is currently on the Buffalo Bills roster and that's pretty much it. It is sad to see that somebody who was once looked at to be the guy for our offense and you know just coming in undrafted which is already hard enough and making the team then being the starter the next year having 888 yards looking to have a breakout season the very next year gets injured and next year they just decided to get a lot more talent which I don't blame them for but get a lot more talent in, and unfortunately, Rod Streeter was the odd man out. And as always, Raider Nation, if you could do me a favor, if you could go to Rod Streeter's Twitter page and his Instagram page and just show him some love and let him know that the Raider Nation still loves him. We still think about him to this day. And Rod, I want to thank you for everything you did for your three years with the Oakland Raiders, especially playing with five different quarterbacks in three years from Carson Palmer to Terrell Pryor to Matt Flynn to Matt McGloin to Derek Carr. What you did for this franchise, you beasted out, man. And I'm sorry it ended the way it did, but... The Raider Nation here, which is the best fan base, still loves you. And don't forget, guys, use the hashtag, the nation still loves you. And just show Rod Streeter the most love you can. 
and just help and just help him out. I know that him and Marquette King are still cool. I see him on Instagram and Twitter still vibing out. So that's good to see. But other than that, thank you, Rod Streeter, for everything you did for us, man.